Okay, so you have traveled all over the world with Thriller Live, which I think is amazing. You got to experience America's Got, America's Got Talent almost all the way to the actual finale. I think that's incredible. And I love your attitude about that where you weren't necessarily disappointed, you were proud because I mean you overcame so many odds and that I think is a really good story in and of itself because I'm sure there's so many people out there who have gone through you know American Idol, The Boys, America's Got Talent and, and shows of that nature and they didn't yeah. make it to the end who were so crushed and disappointed and hated themselves for it. Can you tell yeah. tell people listening why it was that you were proud because I think that that's a really good way of looking at it and I want people to hear it. I was proud because each week, all the choices that you make with the, with the 90 seconds that you have, you just want to do your best. And a lot of times when you're performing live, forget in a competitive situation, just when you're just doing any performance, there's so many variables that you can't control. So I'm a very anxious performer. I'm a professional performer, but I am still a very anxious performer. I'm a perfectionist. And it's taken me so long to just let go. So making it past those first two parts, my first audition and then my second was uh, the judges. They bring in like a celebrity guest judge and Neil Patrick Harris was mine that week. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Girl, like when I tell you I cannot look back at AGT and, and just... Uh, I got to pinch myself that I was in that. And I, honestly, it, we'll get there. But those first two were pre-recorded, and I knew that they happened and I was waiting for them to come on TV. And I already felt that adrenaline rush of doing it and filming it and knowing that the judges, I didn't get a single negative comment from the judges for the entire time I was on that show. <laughs> and that, it's like that to me. Oh, you know what? I was watching that uh, documentary about Chris Benoit. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to whisper, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just sometimes I'm just like, he who shall not be named. But I was watching that, and there was something that I think he must have said to somebody where he said the respect of his peers was more important to him than anything else. And I relate to that so much, you know. Like, I have fans who really enjoy my singing, and I know that. I couldn't do anything without them if they didn't come to see shows or watch my videos. So I'm so appreciative of, of them. And then to know that like someone like Howard Stern or, or Howie Mandel or Mel B or, you know, Heidi Klum, Neil Patrick Harris, you know, just validating you're on the right path. You know, me getting kicked off, I felt like it was okay because of all of that, because all that positive feedback I got, I could watch my performance is back and only cringe a little bit. So that's good. And I'm just super proud of myself, you know, and I'm still growing. So you just hope that you can have more opportunities to show yourself as time goes on. I hope that I answered your question. <laughs> I think you did because I remember telling you this podcast is a huge <laughs> basically it's a huge passion project for me because I felt so alone for a very long time and I felt so lonely and and I felt so many negative things based on the experiences that I was having and the environment I was in and then I, I stopped <laughs> and I realized one day why am I trying to dictate my self-worth on other people's opinions um, a piece of paper with numbers on it and other people's boxes of what they think success fits into and happiness I was like why aren't I making those decisions for myself why aren't I basing my self-worth on myself and my dreams and the way I am as a person with my beliefs as well as what happened to my self-love and did I ever actually have self-love? And those are brutally honest questions that you can't BS yourself with. You either, you either put the work in or you don't. And I think you and I can talk about that a lot is <laughs> When you're in a performing type of industry, there's a lot of vulnerability that goes into that. And there's a lot of outlying influences that can impact your life, whether you realize it or not. And some of those aren't always for the better. And, um, and for me, self-love has been a daily piece of work that I think has changed my entire life. 
And that's what I want out of this podcast. When I'm doing this with people, I, I want them to be candid and, and in telling people about self-love and about, you know, overcoming certain obstacles and adversities and some of their failures, but also their triumphs and what they learned out of it. Because to me, if more people join in on conversations like this, less people will feel alone. And then more of us will become a part of someone else's survival guide. Because I always mm -hmm. feel that whether we know it or not, people are watching. And now more than ever, you're almost never in private. There's cameras everywhere, you know. And for me, I feel like if that's the case, then why are so many people still feeling so lonely and alone and depressed? I think it's because not enough people join in. Everybody's aware, but nobody's really doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why this podcast is so much to me because I want more people to join in and they are finally joining in on these conversations and we're all together kind of contributing little tidbits of what did and didn't work for us. And that yeah. may or may not work for other people. And I think you have a lot of that in your life, especially uh, with the things you've done, the things you've experienced and overcome that can really help other people. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, Sam, you need to listen to Vicky's podcast. There's a lot in there that I know that you can understand and you will appreciate. Yeah. And yes, I want more people Vicky. to be like that, you know? Yeah. And she really was. I learned uh, so much just by, you know, being with her on her podcast and mine. But also because Come on, Taylor, she, doing big things. But it was also because she was also willing to be candid. She was also willing to open up those lines of discussion because she had similar goals of helping people and making a bigger conversation instead of people just acting like things don't happen. Yeah. And so for you, I know you specifically have done all these amazing things, but all these amazing things aren't the biggest contributors to who you are as a person. And that's the same I want people to get to know because you are an amazing wife. You are an amazing mother. You have overcome so many challenges. And now you're a person that your daughter can look up to one day. And you're basically being the adult you needed as a child. And I think that's a skill that we should all learn, even if we, even if some people already have kids or don't aspire to have kids, I think it's still a skill we should all learn because we should all be trying to make the kid we were be proud of the adult we became, you know? That is so banging. <laughs> Thank you, and it's so true. It really is true. When people say like, if I could <laughs> the younger self, my younger self this or whatever, there's a lot that I would tell myself, but I kind of feel like I knew deep inside that I would succeed. I still feel like I'll succeed. And I that's what I wish like everybody could, uh, if I could give everybody something, it would just be like that piece of like, you're meant to be you, like you really are. You're meant to be you. And one foot in front of the other, you better watch Frozen 2. Frozen 2 got a lot of answers in it. <laughs> anxiety people so watch it get that disney plus popping uh, amen <laughs> i love disney i i do <laughs> i love disney too go go, go okay go sorry For real. A lot. oh so am i don't worry about it it's like a, a thing i do uh um, just growing as we talk by the by the time we're done it's gonna be like out there luxurious quarantine hair um uh, <laughs> i loved coco i thought it was so underrated i loved the sentiment in that and i also yes. super loved the sentiment in the princess and the frog tiana i got you girl love yeah. that i wish they, they were Good like messages. more popular oh my god yes coco is ah, the best oh. like you can be on my ofrenda oh. do you want to be on my ofrenda yes, sir. Put, mm -hmm. put me on your ofrenda okay 